a Moldred, New York. Yeah, it looks like a good one. All says right, his path to philosophy is different from Christians. So it's interesting. I, I think that may be true yeah. of all of us, but I'm I'm really curious about your experience as Mordred. <laughs> okay. You read it uh can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Am I on? Okay. You're on. I just wanted to make sure. I'm on. Okay, great. <laughs> um I don't know. I grew up in a. Uh, I grew up as uh, in a family of secular uh, Jews, some of whom were uh, Holocaust survivors, and uh, wow. they were all pretty skeptical. In school, I uh, in school or uh, uh, at the Museum of Natural History, I can. I'm not sure which came first. I learned about uh, Margaret Hamilton's uh, book of uh, mythology. And at the Museum of Natural History, I heard all these tales of uh, uh, native pe people, like of uh, Coyote and uh, the uh, African spider god and things like that. Before I really ran into uh, uh, the Jewish religion or the Christian religion or any of those things. And I always read science fiction books. And uh, uh, I wanted to ask, Christy, are you astigmatic? I'm sorry, say again? Are you astigmatic? Your eyes? Uh, yes, you yeah, I do, ha I do have a mild astigmatism. So okay. I, I know you that, you know, I never am going to see perfectly in that way. Exactly. Half of, uh, I mean, a portion of everything that you look at is your imagination. Mm hmm and, and the truth is that that's you're true of all of us, which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that we have to keep in mind and remember that we're making something of a rounding error every time we think we're taking in information. And that's functional. We just want to be aware of that. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, carrying on. Uh, when I ran into other... Uh, uh, I... Uh, Explored every other every religion I could get uh, get a hold of. I never learned a lot about Islam until more more recently. But uh, all the uh, religious cults and Scientology and New Agey stuff, and uh, plus uh, the uh, all my uh, science fiction writing, plus program music. You know what program music is like? Classical music. You're supposed mm -hmm. to imagine something going on that the, the the music tells you you know tells uh, the the best one is like i think it's called uh, pictures of an expedition exposition mm -hmm. and things like that i always had i always had like mental images of what i was reading or seeing or hearing and things like that and uh, it was as real as anything else the, uh, the as far as i'm concerned the bible it was just another book that uh, like brought up images you know and uh, so, uh, and then I ran into, uh, then I read the uh, Principia Discordia and uh, ran into uh, uh, to some Taoist philosophies and sort of came to the conclusion that, I mean, you know, it's all, it's all connected all back to the, uh, uh, to the singularity. Every, everything is connected because if there wasn't for the original singularity that created this particular universe that we live in, none of this else would have happened, real or imagined. So uh, to, to try and make sure that I'm keeping up with you, that I understand what you're saying, you're yeah. just saying that because there is commonalities between a lot of different creation myths and a lot of different religious beliefs, that all of those things may be yeah. sort of imperfect and, and shades of accurate, but because there is yeah. uh, a consistency throughout it, that there's something there that, that must be true? Um. Is that, a, well, is that a fair summation of, of sort of the uh, philosophy you've come to? That's sort of, that's sort of a fair summation, but I use, uh, I use maybe logic to uh, uh, evaluate anything. Maybe logic? Hmm. Yeah. I appreciate that notion. Yeah, yeah I, I get I mean, that. I, you would like, agree, though, that the problem... Oh, sorry, Christy. Well, I guess I just wanted to very casually point out uh, at the start here that I think teaching sex ed to middle schoolers will very quickly disabuse you of that notion that consistency means accuracy because you hear a lot of the same baffling rumors 
uh, at different schools in different ways uh, that make no real sense, but that are also, if not logical, at least sort of reasonable middle school immature conclusions of just experiencing the same world. You know, if you are 10 years old, 12 years old, and you have a body and it's somewhat similar to every other person's body, you're going to start to make some guesses about that body. And those guesses may look like the guesses that other people are making, even if they are just on their face, absolutely silly and ridiculous. Okay. Can I, uh, can I just give you a quick definition of maybe logic? I personally would love to hear that, but yeah. okay. Yeah, I'm interested in okay, that. Sure. All right. Maybe logic consists of never regarding any model or map of the universe with total 100% belief or total 100% denial. Can I stop Three you there? In probability, not absolute, applying this. Uh, okay, yeah. Sorry. So that's, that's, uh, well, I wanted to say that's no. That's, uh, well, that first thing you said, I'm sorry, I know cut, cut you off really quickly. But uh, so you, would yeah. you disagree that science science has the same attitude in the sense it's just going to tentatively hold what, what the model uh, predicts until there's better information or it's falsified, right? So, you, so are you saying that you that you're yeah, on board with that? You're on board uh, with that same thing? I'm trying to understand. It, yeah, uh, it is the zetetic zetetic model method. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to yeah, I was trying to see if it's like tandem to that. That's all. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely, yes. Uh, okay. Not absolutes, applying the zetetic attitude outside of the harder or uh, hard sciences, physics or softer sciences, and then to non-sciences like politics, ideology, jury verdicts, and of course, conspiracy theories. And the zetetic method differs from the usual scientific method in that in using it, one Basis conclusions on experimentation and observation, as opposed to yours, which is that is my zetet. Oh, that, that is, is oh, that is so. Okay. Yeah, uh, I uh, I check out uh, what what I what I see. I tend to uh, take with a higher probability with, than what other people tell me that they saw or, ex or experienced. And what people, people, what people who seem to know what they're talking about tell me, uh, uh, I take with, I uh, take everything with a grain of salt. You know, maybe logic. But uh, if people seem, people sound like they know what they're talking about, I will give them a higher probability than uh, people like uh, William Ray, uh, William Lane Craig. All right, so that's it's where I'm going like, to push back on you because. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because. It's, I don't know that the weight of the words matter in any way. I don't care how convincingly you can say something or how unconvincing William Lane Craig or someone can say something, uh, which I think is the case. I, it matters whether or not the the independent evidence points to the, to what they're espousing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious yeah. on that logic because it sounds like you're you're assigning prior probabilities to... No, like your prior. mental state just being confident that that person seems like they know what they're talking about. And I feel like that is a, a very huge flaw in your epistemology, if that's the case. It's a really easy way to get taken in. Yeah, it's how con men sell their products really easily to people. I mean, they rely on I, they rely on that I, I to get you. I won't commit to any philosophy if I if I, if I can't get if I can't get uh, if I don't accept more than a fifty percent probability of it having any truth to it. Okay, but but are you going to take the probability off of just the fact that a specific person said it? Because that's where I'm fighting back on. Oh no, has no has no weight. I'm not going to assign probability because one person said something. I will assign probability if one person says something and somebody else uh, somebody else uh, backs up that statement with uh, with uh, with facts, or if somebody if enough people if uh, okay. I don't uh, don't necessarily subscribe to a majority rule because the majority isn't always right. If uh, if people, I mean, okay, if if enough scientists explain quantum uh, quantum physics. 
or quantum mechanics to me, I will begin to uh, I'll begin to uh, credit that there's something to it. But if one person like just uh, tells me about uh, uh, biocentrism, I'll say that's an interesting concept, but I don't know how I don't know how a- I don't how, know how accurate wow. it is. Well, yeah. So, I mean, all, all it sounds like what you're stating is that you have people that espouse claims and then you have the independent evidence yeah. that backs up the claim. Um, but I would just hope that you're not taking any prior probability assessment or assessment of a fact purely based on the fact that somebody said it or that a specific person said it or that multiple people said it, because that would be what's called an ad populum fallacy, which is just to state that something is true because a lot of yeah. people believe it. That's going to be independent of that. Now we do need like, you know, the more peer review and stuff, I agree, that's, I, uh, that solidifies a belief or, or knowledge. But, um, but yeah, it sounds like you would have an easier way of just saying, you know, people make claims. I don't accept the claim unless you back the claim up, which we're in total agreement. If that's the case, then I, mm-hmm. then I wouldn't see anything that's, that's different. And I also don't know that many other people don't take the same route. It's just whether or not they actually apply it all the way through. Right. Live up to that ideal. Yeah. Well, how about uh, Thunderfoot's uh, beige assumptions? I haven't watched uh, Thunderfoot in like yeah. three years, so I couldn't tell you anything Thunderfoot's doing. So I apologize, but. Okay, um, well, no, this, he came up with this more than three years ago. Basically, the uh, uh, basal assumptions are that uh, the universe exists. We can learn something about reality. Ex- explanations of reality that have uh, predictive uh, 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 power, predictive something or other, or predictive power are more useful than those that don't. Yeah, so, it's all so it's going to be based upon what future every, predictions. Everything are. else is speculation. Everything else is speculation. Science is uh, it never stops trying to figure out what's going on, and uh, a religion uh, never stops trying to fill the gaps with God. It's a yeah. I mean, it's as simple as we imagine things, right? Every one of us does it. We all can imagine some idea yeah. um, uh-huh. that might not correspond to reality. In a lot of cases, it does not. So what's the method at which we apply that goes from the imaginative to the actual? Um, and I agree with you. Like I, I, that's to some extent, I don't, maybe we press further. I don't know your, your full thing, but uh, yeah, I mean, the best way to, dis- for me, I think the best approach or the best way of knowledge, it should be like, like placing a mirror in front of reality, right? You, you're going to have cracks in it, smudges. It's not going to reflect reality necessarily perfect. It'll give you a, a model or general idea. But the idea is, is that you, you want to keep furthering this with novel predictions, right? Or with future predictions, things that give us new information yeah. in the future, because then you kind of take those cracks and you clean up the smudges. And then eventually you shouldn't be able to tell the difference between the mirror that's reflecting reality and reality itself, right? The model uh, or the map as opposed to the territory. Um, so it sounds like, I mean, we're in agreement there, but I mean, do you take to some supernatural claim through this? Because... Um, we only got a few, we, you know, we're running on time and I wanted to try to get to that if we can, if, if you hold a belief, if this method has gotten you there, that's, I think what we'd be the most interested in. Mm-hmm. If I believe anything, it's that uh, people f- uh, filter reality through their uh, previous life experiences. Whenever you it's see totally true. or experience anything... Your, your brain says, well, how is that similar to uh, something that happened to me before? And that biases exactly how you react to it. There's reality, and then there's the reality that your mind can, can, see, can, can accept. Sure. Now, that's, some, that's something I, I would, if I believed anything, it would be that. Well, I I think that there's value at the very least in recognizing the imperfection of the information that we take in. That doesn't mean that we don't have the ability to like really investigate uh, these things and that we can't come to some meaningful conclusions. You know, we don't just get to throw our hands up and say like, well, it's all broken. You know, there is no truth. There's only you and what you make the truth. But, you know, it's uh, it's worthwhile to notice that those biases exist, even if they don't give us like a free pass to just ignore the whole uh, enterprise. Yeah. No, every couple of years I wake up one morning and realize <coughs> there was something that I was uh, filtering reality through that I don't need to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
I've been around for 72 years, and I, in, in that time, uh, my viewpoint on reality and the uh, the universe has changed multiple times. Yeah, you know, that, and that's, when I I that's, a, ten that's a good thing. Old, uh, ten year old until uh, until now, every cup, every once in a while, I get new information, and I uh, I uh, try to uh, work it into my. Uh, into my uh, view viewpoint. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, I would I would agree for the most part. There, I, I was wondering if you kind of had an entailment that you go to to some. Really, to some... I really, yeah. I shouldn't. Sorry. Have, go ahead. I shouldn't have accepted the, the word belief because, uh, according to Robert Anton Wilson, belief is a, is <clears throat> is a form of brain damage. If you believe yeah, would, something, uh, you stop thinking about. It. I know. Now, belief, belief just corresponds to a proposition that you think is true. Um, and then knowledge is going to, you're going to have something that's going to be doing the justifying it. But hey, we're running short on time. We're going to try to take one more call, uh, though we, we do appreciate, uh, okay. uh, do appreciate your call. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Take Thank care. You for your time.